that's when I just said, okay, I'm going to Burning Man. Like I was just like, I'm gonna go this year. This is very overwhelming. It's like being born again. It's unreal what happens out here, having your mind completely blown at all moments. No matter how much we talk about this, on the first Sunday night, your jaw will fucking hit the ground. It's a rave. It's a social experiment. It's nothingness. It's sadness. It's everything at the same time. It's so many different layers that you can't even say Burning Man is this. There are huge stages and art cars and things blinking and things on fire, but what people don't expect is the burner spirit and how giving everyone is. People spend all their money and raise money and do whatever they can all year long so that they have the opportunity to share and give. It's an experiment in city building. Every year this city gets a little smarter, a little better. We learn how to live together a little better and it seems to work magic. It's my favorite city. The creativity that I see here that people have it in them, they bring it out and give it. I think it's a place that's giving permission to adults because as adults you learn not to do things, you learn to conform to things and here people are given a chance not to do that. You see so many wonders, I mean real, honest to goodness wonders out here. You know, installations that just leave you awestruck. It fuels these minds that otherwise might not have seen the art that they could create and brought it into the world. You realize, partially because it's role modeled all around here, that art and self-expression is not what you thought it was. It is the way people make choices and the way that they live and the way that they dance and everything. And when you realize, holy crap, I am an artist. Radical self-expression is showing a side of yourself that maybe isn't acceptable in normal society, in the default world. It's this amazing thing to see people really step into themselves and just become themselves. And these superhero versions of ourselves. You could be as weird as you want to be, you could dress however you want to dress, you could evolve in that character that you've been building in yourself. And nobody's going to judge you, everyone is going to take pictures of you and laugh and dance with you and it's beautiful. You're following your heart and you're being weird and it's all inclusive, that's the inclusion thing is like, we got room for you grandma, like bring the kids, like everybody's in this family. Where else are people just like begging you to come and just like have your presence be there? Every other place, it's about, you know, either money or something or they want to sell you something or they want to promote something. And here it's just about like we just want you here. We want you here. We want people here. We want as many people as we can. I'm going up to strangers and talking to them. It used to, to scare me. And they're responding with kindness. And the fact that that like surprises me is heartbreaking about society. Like people should be good to each other. Like th this shouldn't be so shocking. I was horribly bullied as a child. My name's sort of bizarre. I grew up in a very waspy. Everyone's like a Kate or a Kelly or a Mary or a Jane, and I just didn't fit in. And here, like I've never once not felt like I fit in. I've never once like met a crowd who was like, we don't want to hang out with you. And I know there's a lot of people who are socially awkward, who feel shy, who feel judged, who feel maybe they're not thin enough or pretty enough or whatever their issue is. And here, like, you really can come here truly and be accepted by somebody. And usually within a 10-foot radius, somebody will love you. Everyone's a participant. It's not a spectator sport. Everyone is playing. This is all the field. You get the right kind of metal and you shake it up and the sparks fly and we're the right kind of metal. People come up and want to interact with the gear and they want to get on the mic and they want to have fun with it. It's like you're talking to everyone out there and they want to participate. I brought my parents out here for the first time. My dad's 77 and I just took him across the playa to give a lecture. And he gave a lecture on healing and everybody's jumping in giving their answers and I think it was the first time he'd had a lecture where 
people are actually talking back at him and he's like, yeah, exactly, Tai Chi, yes, vitamins. We're all on stage and everybody's a participant. You're meant to interact with 90% of the art here unless it's actually dangerous. There is no difference between stage and audience at Burning Man. And that's, I think, when, when, where participation really like crosses from being an event or from being a party or from being a festival into a city that exists for once a year, for one week. And if you come and you are a citizen, you have to feel like you want to give back. I guess the gifting economy, it runs the gamut. You our, did a whole theme camp. Our first camp. year was the theme camp, so bringing all the water and the fuel and things like that. This year I have these buttons that I've been giving out to people. You kind of get used to walking up to people and approaching them and saying, I got something for you, or I think you need this. And that just always warms somebody's heart, um, even if it's just as simple as a hug. And in a world where the banking system is a house of cards and you know government and the war machine along with it it's it's nice to come out here and and see what it looks like to just not have money and to give freely to bring what you need and to bring something extra to share with everyone when you actually feel how good it is to light someone else up I'm a believer in selfish service, meaning like you don't do good in the world because you should. You don't do good in the world because it alleviates your guilt. You do good in the world because it makes you feel awesome to make other people happier. Part of the beauty of what we're doing out here is the suffering through it. Burning Man's not supposed to be easy. We don't do this because it's easy. We do this because it's hard. So you're in such an extreme environment that you've got to appreciate that it's not always going to be easy all the time. and. It's sort of like you take the good with the bad, you know what I mean? You have, it's hard, but like there's so much good shit to smile about. You get to see yourself through this completely different perspective, which I think is very empowering for a lot of people. It takes you out of your comfort zone and knowing that in a moment you're gonna need help and somebody else is gonna be there to help you. You have to be self-reliant, but you also need things to help somebody who isn't. So you need to really think about preparation. You really need to read the principles and understand what you're taking on when you come here. It's a big commitment and it's not for everybody. We got up at 5 a.m. to take photos right here, 5 a.m. I never get up at 5 a.m. in Los Angeles. We are anything but lazy. We are all assertive just to even be here right now. So let's just remember what we're capable of next time we go home and think, fuck, it's Monday again. fireworks start to go and the whole crowd lights up and the flames grow bigger and bigger and the crowd's eyes just go up and up and that glow goes up and you become part of that man. You feel like the crowd is the man and everybody's focused energy all around it is completely connected into that letting go, moving forward fearlessly. The man is sort of the center of the, the city, but the temple is kind of the heart of the burn. Once the temple burns, it's, it's really over, and it's, um, you know you're leaving home, and that's hard. And usually, for a lot of people, it means they're leaving something. The burn for me is about the, the memorial I laid in the temple, and so really, the burn of the man will be very celebratory, and the burn of the temple will be very appropriately sad and provide a level of closure. It's going to be hard. It'll be hard. Letting go of loved ones, letting go of personal issues that you need to just put in that suitcase and set it on fire and say goodbye and move on with your life. Dad, I can't believe I am writing you, but I really need some closure. And maybe this will bring me some. I want to make an impact on the world, Dad, but I will. And I could have never done it without you. I think we come back kinder. People ask if we get more open-minded, and I know we get more open-hearted. 
the biggest gift it's given me is just courage to be independent. And now I'll never not be back. It's really the best week of my life. I've learned so much about people, about the world, about myself. There's an aura around that's really contagious, you know? And it, it makes me want to be a better person. You can't really describe anybody's experience. It's this beautiful light. I'm gonna take this back home. I feel that every person that comes to Burning Man even once has something to bring to the real world. The unity of everyone feeling that we are the same. Bringing that to the real world is beautiful, you know? Just knowing that we're all the same. And I think that's the goal for most people is to live Burning Man year round. Live the principles that are, you know, espoused here and, and to to be a part of this community year round. Find ways to be creative and make things and adjust their lives. I mean, I know I have. I live in the default world like I live here. Anything is possible if we set our hearts and minds to it. If we could accomplish this, pull this thing off in the desert as human beings, and what really, it's limitless what we can accomplish. It has to be multi-generational, it has to be every type and kind. And you know what, what's the worst thing that can happen if you know wealthy people or people who have power come here? People with power experience this and then they can take that into society and into communities, the ones that make the laws, the ones that write the articles, the people that have impact and have influence and have power, bring them. You know, you should have those people here and they should be able to sort of then experience what this is and take that out. So it's sort of, you gotta have all kinds. You gotta have, everybody's gotta be here. I think what you need to do is to invite people to come to see what it is for them. And to do that, we need to create more doors into this room. We don't need to change the room or compromise in any way, but we need to create more doors, I think. It's about community, you know. It's, uh, this, is, this is where people come back because it's home. I need to go back there.